British Columbia's experiment with a harmonized sales tax is officially over. Today, West Coast retailers are ringing in the return of the provincial sales tax. Vancouver reporter Byron Chu joins us with more. Byron. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion out here in BC over this uh, new provincial sales tax. Of the 100,000 businesses in the province, it's believed that a quarter of them still haven't registered to charge the tax, even though it is in effect today. What is, this means for consumers like us is uh, we have to look at our bills carefully to make sure that the correct tax is being applied. But it's not necessarily so simple as that because a lot of people don't know uh, what the PST applies to and what it doesn't. Now, the PST is not supposed to apply to most services such as taxis and haircuts and restaurant meals. But when it comes to goods, it applies to some and not others. Some exemptions include uh, bicycles, books, magazines, uh, child car seats, and even junk food. But the actual list is very long and you need a tax accountant to go through it for you. That, of course, has created a lot of confusion. And we spoke to opposition leader Adrian Dix today. He's putting the blame for this confusion on the Liberal government. Certainly from the beginning, from the election campaign, onto the Premier Clark's um, taxpayer-funded campaign in favor of the HST in the referendum, uh, onto today when there's still uh, challenges in transition. I think uh, this was uh, four lost years of tax policy in BC. and. Uh, uh, on this question, I think um, there's no question who's responsible. Now, a lot of businesses are also unhappy about the fact that uh, there's going to be a $1.6 billion of new tax applied to businesses. Uh, they say this is going to hurt them competitively, especially compared to Ontario and Alberta. Uh, one doesn't have a PST and one has an HST. And they, but, you know, on the bright side for some industries, uh, the restaurant business here is very happy. They expect to see a 4 to 6% uh, rebound in their business as a result of not having to charge the 7% tax on their customers. Byron Chu in Vancouver tonight. Thanks, Byron. You're welcome. All right, for more on this story, I'm very pleased to welcome Jordan Bateman of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. He's in our Vancouver studios as well. And, and Jordan, let me pick up on that one thing that, that uh, Byron mentioned in his report on the who do you blame? Who's responsible? Adrian Dick says it ain't us. He's speaking more about the confusion. Uh, where do you think, uh, is there going to be political blame, first of all? And if there is, where is it going to fall? Well, for four years, David, the HST has been like the ex-girlfriend that British Columbians have not been able to get over. She has dominated our conversations politically, economically. Everything comes back to the HST. We have a new premier because of the HST. We have the Liberals 20 points down in the polls because of the HST. Uh, it, it is absolutely the underwritten everything that's gone on in the last four years in British Columbia. And uh, today um, it's gone, but I think the effects will be felt certainly through the May 14th election. It used to be the hated sales tax, the HST, replacing what former finance minister Kevin Falcon called the particularly stupid tax, the PSD. And as you know, economists, the Economist Party likes the HST. They don't like PSDs. But if you're a taxpayer, um, I think there was a panel back in 2011 that suggested that taxpayers were paying basically a dollar a day per household or family member because of the HST. Okay, that disappears because that certainly can add up. But there aren't as many rebates as available for, for PST payers as there were for HST payers. And that means it could hurt low, this, this move could hurt lower income British Columbians more than anyone else. Yeah, and that's been the, the, the saddest part of this story is the fact that lower income folks had more access to HST rebates than they will to PST rebates. So most of them will be further behind. At least that's what the economists and the models tell us. Now, every family is different, and, and that was really the story of this referendum. Everyone voted on the HST for a different reason. But um, it'll be interesting to see how these low-income families rebound. Many of them were viscerally opposed to the HST and came out and voted against it, uh, despite those rebates. So this HST was a disaster from the start as far as understanding what the public policy meant um, to the actual people on the street. And uh, no matter how many economists and eggheads you had talking about it, you just could not seem to make it fit with what was actually going on when people were going to stores and buying things. There's a whole range of uh, consumption tax regimes across the country, some of which include HSTs. Ontario, of course, has an HST, much in Atlantic Canada. As you've looked around, is there a way to sell what might be a politically unpopular tax policy, and yet maybe the kind of tax policy that produces the least amount of distortions, maybe more efficient, and of course that, that would be an HST, many say. Yeah, I mean, Prince Edward Island today, I believe, just introduced the HST. 
so it is something that we're looking at we're looking at across the country the best way for any politician to sell an idea especially ones that are difficult is to go slow take your time explain to people what's going on and make sure you know the answers and i think back to that first press conference where gordon campbell and colin hansen sprung this idea on the media and on the public they clearly did not have a lot of the answers to the very simple rudimentary questions that were being asked that started the tax off on the wrong foot. I think within weeks, it was down to an 8% approval re rating among British Columbians. There was no way you could rebuild that going into a referendum. And of course, that was one of the things, but not, the, not all of the things, but one of the things that, that caused Gordon, Gamble to, Gordon Campbell pardon me, to quit. Christy Clark steps in. Christy Clark tries to undo that political damage, but can you put that toothpaste back in that HST-free tube? No, and the Premier Clark, I mean, she did have an opportunity to undo it when she first came in, but she actually doubled down. They went hard after, uh, you know, a big advertising campaign supporting it. Uh, they're going forward with the referendum. She could have just defeated it and gone to the polls, maybe even run on an HST. Uh, if she could have gained the 45% support that the HST did, she'd be reelected handily. So, yeah, a lot of blunders on this from start to finish. Uh, right down to, you know, the last few weeks, we've seen very little advertising about the new PST. Businesses still haven't been registered. Um, you know, they, they didn't want to talk about this policy because it's been so unpopular for so long. Yeah, Jordan Bateman, Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.